it's a big day for BBC News School Report. Your chance, of course, to make the news. Enjoy the day and good luck. In March 2009, students in hundreds of schools across the UK took part in the BBC News School Report. Their challenge? To make their own news and broadcast it to the world. This is the real thing now. We are going to work incredibly hard, so you can't have lives between now and next Thursday. No one said it would be easy. I think we're on time, but about 27 minutes to go, we'll see. So, you know, there's no pressure. Oh God, it's all crashed, what am I going to do? I can't afford to edit it now, just have to do that, okay? What okay. sort of equipment do you use? How do you think the children are going to be affected? How will the credit crunch affect you personally? We are going live, this is our broadcast. This is Guildford County School. It's 9am on what's known as Newsday, and the school reporters are gearing up. Shall I get them in? So who is their, who is like, you know, their, their bulletin editor? As yeah, it they were. need to have somebody. They and but you can explain, to... why don't you yeah. explain what that person has to do? But who, who's going to do it? We have, I don't know. I'll explain They'd that one, to, they need they one. They need to find one. And, and they then you can they ensure that they actually that they have get one. one. I have an absolute bag of nerves. I hope you realise that. <laughs> This is, this is scarier than Baghdad. Listen, I'm relying on the professional. The school reporters have just five hours to find, write, interview, record and edit until their broadcast goes live. There we go. Good luck, everyone. Off we go. But the students are well prepared. For several months leading up to Newsday, English teacher Annabelle Gibbs and their BBC mentor Kate Riley have been teaching the Year 8s in lessons and after-school workshops how to be professional journalists. It is a way of getting the children to write their own news. So when they're surrounded by adults telling them what the news is, is their opportunity to say, well, this is how I see the world, this is how I see the news. And they have a day where it's their news that counts and the world, in fact, can listen to what they have to say about it. I think it's really important that children understand how the media works as, as a part of how, them understanding how democracy works. It's very specifically teaching them about how to make sure their news is correct and accurate and impartial. One month before Newsday, the children have a practice day, a full dress rehearsal to give them an idea of what Newsday will be like. Practice day is also a chance for them to start thinking about the big stories they might want to feature. Right, so which bits do we want to mention? Today, producer Mark Frankel from Radio 4 is connecting the school reporters to some students in South Africa. Hello everybody, I've been working in the BBC for 10 years, uh, mostly in radio, so um, I know quite a bit about radio editing, which may be helpful for some of you later. While the school reporters start writing and interviewing, six students set off with Mark to BBC Radio Southern Counties. We're about to talk to um, some students in South Africa about their life in South Africa and their expectation for the presidential elections in April. The idea is that the six students here will talk to those six students in, from a school in, in Johannesburg about what they anticipate and expect to see from a new president and how that may or may not change their lives. And we'll record that and then edit it back at school. Hello, my name's Nancy and I really, really like dancing. Hi, I'm Megan and I'm 13 years old. I'm Tiffany, I'm a girl, I'm a netball player and a big fan of cartoons. Hi, I'm Sinead and I'm in grade 9 and um, I'm also a girl and I'm a big United supporter. Do you have any doubts about what the president will uh, promise for the future? Um, if I have to see the president walk across my street, I wouldn't even know he's the president. Um, he hasn't really promised us anything or he hasn't really consulted with the, with the country a lot. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> they were very knowledgeable about politics because it's quite a political country out there and they certainly knew a hell of a lot more than we did. They seemed to know a lot about their president and what they wanted from their president, which I think was very good, and I think we should be able to know that much about them like they do. That was really fun. That was really fun. I'm so glad you were again. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to do it. That was really fun.
back at school, the pressure is on and things are, well, not quite falling into place. I can't afford to edit it now, just to that, okay? We've had a lot of technical problems on practice day. Uh, the, t the editing software that we were using, we weren't really used to, so we did have a lot of problems moving material around. This is exactly what you would have to do in the minute before you went to the broadcast live. You would be going, oh God, it's all crashed, what am I going to do? So now it's time for Lancaster to celebrate. Our top stories are, a Turkish airliner has raised air safety concerns, Nintendo's for school, and a conversation with South African children. What we have decided to do is to have half the group working on an online report and only have half the group doing a radio bulletin. Then they'll have a bit more time to really focus and really do it well. And it's not just Annabelle and Kate who have learnt some excellent lessons from practice day. We spent too much time trying to get the people to, uh, trying to interview the people and we didn't spend enough time um, actually cutting down the interview so we yeah. got a little bit too much in that. You've got to make sure to listen to everybody and give everybody a chance to do something instead of yeah. like loads of people going off to interview people and having one person left behind to write the story. There's just one week to go before the big day and the school reporters are meeting for their last workshop. Kate has made use of her journalist contacts and she has some exciting news. I think some of you wanted to interview Vince Cable, who's a politician. That is set up. He said yes, he wants to be interviewed by you. He's the person who speaks about finance for the Lib Dems. I mean, that's amazing, really. So what we've got to work on is keeping focused on it all and not losing track of it all. So you can't have lives between now and next Thursday. They're officially cancelled until school reports are done. The school reporters have some homework to do before going to London to interview the Lib Dem Shadow Chancellor. Oh, maybe you can do something about his thing with the UN. Do you think that children are going to be affected in the economic crisis? I hope you don't have this problem, but uh, you know, quite a lot of families Even with all the practice, preparation and some interviews already in the bag, there is so much work to be done by the deadline of 2pm. Can the school reporters do it? Welcome back. This is the real thing now. We've had our practice day, so we are going to work incredibly hard to get our broadcast out by 2 o'clock. That's our deadline. We have to do it. We've got some expert help with us this morning. We've got Kate back from the BBC and Chris Booth as well, who He's only just back from Baghdad. There we go. Good luck, everyone. Off you go. You guys who are doing radio, you're putting together one bulletin, is that right? Who, who's in charge of saying, we're going to start the bulletin with this? I need to know where's this? Who's edited that? Nancy you're, you're the boss, are you? Am I? OK. You are that. I came for the first few sessions here. Um, when it was all very rough and ready and the children um, really didn't know where to begin and they thought that uh, journalism was you know, extremely mysterious. Um, so we began the process of demystifying it and encouraging them to understand that uh, broadcasting is really all about telling stories and they're at least as well qualified to do that as adults are. And they picked up on that remarkably quickly. One question to each and edit it together so, so we're getting different points of view from different questions. Yeah. So, You've been very busy for half an hour, so what we're going to now do is hear your stories. I'll put them up on the board, then we'll have a discussion about if we should go with them. Um, Steph, have you got a story? Um, we're doing our story about the plastic bags, and we're doing it on the positive sides of it and all the campaigns that are going around. Our story is about why do kids like sweets so much, and it turns out there's, that, there's like this whole scientific uh, meaning behind it which actually the sugar in sweets helps kids grow more. In primary schools, so they're thinking about getting rid of all of the stats and tests that they do, like they have with the year nine. Um, obviously we've got the credit crunch one, um, and we would like to get a link from Vince Cable talking. Does he talk about the credit crunch in your interview? Yeah. Think? Okay, we, don't, we want to get a link from him, and we just going to listen to the stuff that the South African kids have recorded. I think we've got all our stories. 
Golly. <laughs> if anyone's not sure what they're doing, speak to me, otherwise, off you go. report about sweets and how they make you grow when you're young? If you eat apples, apples have sugar as well. If they fit specifically sugars from sweets making you grow more, I would be a bit worried because there are other effects of sugars that would have on your teeth, for instance. Do you think sacks are a necessary part of learning? I don't think that the Key Sage 3 sats that we had in Year 9 were very helpful in English. I'm very, very pleased they've gone. Three, two, one, go. How will the credit crunch affect you personally? I don't think it does really affect me personally. Uh, well, I have been getting a shorted amount on my boggy money, but that was about it. It is now one o'clock. We've got an hour to go before we broadcast our bulletin. Four of our reporters interviewed Vince Cable they asked him how, it, how, how to explain exactly what is going on in the credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Radio in particular is quite interesting because it makes kids really have to sit and concentrate on something through their ears because they've got no visual stimulus. I'm like the primary technician and if anyone's got any problems I help if you like. The troubleshooting. Yes it will be okay. I. Should. We've got 15 minutes and the editing's going well, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, no. What I find inspirational about the school report is there's a kind of a professionalism that you're encouraging them to aspire to. You know, we expect them to hit their deadline. We assume that they can do it. Good afternoon, Mr Cable. I'm Jamie. We're here on behalf of BBC School Report in Guildford County. One of the main things I love about it is this is opening up their eyes to the outside world. We're all guilty of tunnel vision, I think. And here's an opportunity to, to open up the world to the kids. They can see what's going on. It's sort of tense when it goes wrong. Then you look back on it and you think, yeah, I did the right thing. And I'm really glad of what I did. Sorry, I think that's all we've got time for. Thanks for listening. Bye.